Hi, I'm Joshua Hudson today here with Leo and Brian and today we're going to be dis discussing some helpful tips for students recently entering the workforce. So you guys can just answer whenever you know whenever you know the answer. <laughs> so uh, what are some helpful tips for students just recently entering the workforce? I think you know um, similar to school so something familiar to you is um, obviously showing up. So depending on what the job you're, you're you know looking at obviously attendance and punctuality are key things to look at. And I know it sounds incredibly simple, you know, for the first answer, but surprisingly it's simple things like that that usually um, create challenges, I think, for a lot of new people in the workforce is, you know, because someone's paying you to do a job, it's not always going to be the easiest in the, in, in the things you want to do, but it, they're going to need you to show up on a regular basis. And um, so that's the first one that I would start with, and I'll kick it over to Leo. We can kind of ping pong back and forth for you. You know, my thoughts would be also to, um, to come in and be curious about the business, no matter what job you're actually doing, mm -hmm. what business are you supporting, because that's more of the fun part. So, you know, how am I supporting the business itself? What are we trying to accomplish here in this company? You know, taking advantage of that. And mo most organizations will make that kind of information available, but I'm not sure everybody kind of pays attention. Because that, that way it makes your job, I, seem, I think, seem a little bit more worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Even if you're uh, starting off with something that could be a little tedious, you can kind of engage more with the business and the customers and how are we doing and uh, what's the direction of the company. So it's kind of fun, I think, to take that perspective. Okay. Um, what are some key aspects that employee or employers are looking for in employees? So I think, again, I think a lot of these are similar, but, you know, they're looking for people that fit, right? So, you know, any place you go into, if it's McDonald's or Chick-fil-A or Walmart or Target or whatever, you find people that seem really comfortable in that environment. They like high pressure, they like high speed, whatever it is. And those that do the research, I think, that Leo talked about and figure out what the purpose of that business is and make sure that that's a good fit for them. That's something that they look for to one, keep you there, and then two, promote you higher in the organization. And if you take a job literally just to get a paycheck or to get some extra gas money and people can tell you really don't enjoy it, you probably won't want to be there that long. Mm -hmm. They probably won't want you there that long and you're definitely not going to continue to promote onward and upward in that organization. So I think, you know, just doing the, them knowing you did the homework, figure out that's a good fit, kind of a win-win for both of you is something that they're going to look for if they if they consider keeping you for a long time or promoting you within that organization. Yeah, to build on that from some skills, you know, I think over the course of my career, I think more and more um, work is done in teams. You know, it's very hard to be an individual contributor and just get anything accomplished. So you have to work in teams, get along with people, uh, be able to collaborate and come to um, kind of consensus on decisions. And then, you know, so I think if you bring that kind of um, uh, skill set and you're open to doing that kind of work, I think that's really important. And I think um, the ability to communicate with people, you know, really, um, and I, I think face-to-face -face communication, I mm -hmm. think, um, as opposed to maybe electronic, I think some young people are so used to communicating, you yeah. know, by text and electronics, and but you're really going to have to build relationships with people, and that usually takes more communication, uh, work on teams, and you're going to have to be working with people that are uh, of all generations a little bit too. So you have some young people, some medium, and some, some old folks. So how do you all get along and, and get the work accomplished? So if you can bring collaborative work uh, and, and think of it in that terms, that's a great thing to be able to bring into a, inside a company, no matter what business it is. Um, you said how like a lot of the younger generation is so accustomed to technology and you know communicating over texts and emails and stuff like that. How what kind of advice would you have for those people to become more comfortable with face-to-face -face conversation and like actual personal conversations? I, th I think, you know, having a true interest to whoever they're talking to. I mean, different environments. So if I'm in a call center, um, I might be doing virtual chat. So that's, you know, great in that situation. But I think taking an interest in their customers, again, and knowing your business. So if you're in a bank or discount retail or department store or whatever it is, I mean that you're there to serve a purpose, usually to make somebody else's life easier, makes it, I think, easier to communicate and build that relationship. So you have to be really good at presenting a, you know, a friendly face and having a helpful attitude to start to begin creating a good dialogue of communication, I think. I think if you've already been exposed to electronic communication, you know, too, that you, know, you can be misunderstood a lot electronically. Mm -hmm. You know, your tone of a message doesn't come through. 
So I really encourage people to think about, okay, what is the message I'm trying to communicate? Because sometimes it's very appropriate to send a text or an instant message or an email, but other times I think it's much more appropriate to maybe pick up the phone, even you know the old phone system, and, uh, and actually maybe get up and walk down the hallway and meet someone. Sometimes I, I laugh because I see people emailing each other, and they're literally sitting next to each other, or they're in the, the next row over, and I think, uh, you know, bring, your, bring more of, uh, of your personal skills to work as well because relationships are still critical uh, to getting things done and working, again, collaboratively in teams. So it's, it's using the, the right channel of communication for the appropriate thing. And I think you really have to think about that. I think most people know it, but they're not always thinking about it. Yeah. Um, a lot of students just now entering the workforce might not know properly how to go through an interview and everything. So what kind of tips would you have for people who might be really nervous about that? Or? Well, um, a couple things. I'll start on this one. I think um, you, know, you have to remember that in an interview, you, you have a very short period of time to make an impression. So you really have to make your best. You know, so you really do, and, and even in terms of your appearance, you know, uh, even though you, know, just, you, you might not think that's important, but I think um, uh, you have to think about, hey, am, am I really ready for the interview, even in my appearance and how I'm dressed? Because you're really coming in, and most folks that are interviewing you think, hey, this is really the best that they have. So in terms of even from your dress to your preparation, uh, to really doing a little research, um, using all the tools that you know of on the company itself, you could even research the person that you're interviewing with. So I think the more information you bring in in terms of preparation, uh, the better off you're going to be. Yeah, I think you know the other thing that in kind of the digital world that we live in is is the realization that for a lot of the jobs, you won't do a paper-based resume, nor will you see an interview probably nine times out of 10, right? You know, they're, depending on the position or the company or the line of business, you know, you could be applying over the internet through a hiring kiosk or something else. So you have to represent yourself electronically in the best light to even make it through the screen, right? Before you even mm -hmm. talked about the phase that you get to with Leo. So I think, you know, and in high school, um, you have the opportunity to do that, not only with good grades, but you know, joining different organizations, and then making sure that you're intentional about putting those on you know, your online application and other things, because the human resource manager or the boss or whoever it is at the other end that's receiving all this, more times than not is got 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 resumes, and they're trying to figure out how to cut it down to the next two, three or four so you can get to a live interview. And so put yourself in their shoes as a hiring manager in that line of business and say, well, if I was the manager at whatever, right, um, what would I be looking for, you know, to be a successful employee in this organization? Because you're marketing yourself to that person virtually first and then in person. And you have to do a good job at that or you will never see the in-person interview. I want to build on that, too, because okay. one other thing is, you know, to, to get in front. But now, now in the face-to-face -face interview, you know, you also, hiring managers want to hire people that really want the job. Mm -hmm. uh, so the enthusiasm for that and really really going for it as opposed to being pretty passive. Yeah, you can answer the questions, and, but really how excited are you about the opportunity? And I think, you, you know, just think of yourself as a hiring person. If you were hiring someone, you want somebody that's excited about it. Uh, they're starting off. So, so don't forget to bring that with you because sometimes people are pretty passive. And, and uh, uh, you know, you're trying to figure out, do they really want this job? Make, it, make sure you bring that want to and express that inside the, the organization. It'll really help you in the interview. All right. Um, now, a lot of kids have had job applications for like fast food jobs and stuff like that but what like what might a person need to know when they're filling out a job application to make it more appealing yeah appealing. Mm -hmm. you know one i'd give you just from that workspace so a lot of high school kids or when you're in college you're probably not picking up a career job at that point right i mean you're more than likely going in entry level so it, you know, the one thing that I would look at where you can control it is availability. So, and a lot of times you might not want to work nights and you might not want to work weekends, but the fact of the matter is people want to eat and shop on nights and weekends, so someone's got to work at that time. So sometimes you getting a job or not getting the job is how comfortable you are opening up your availability to do things that other people won't do. And, you know, it's a, it can just be a short to midterm move. You know, get into the company if it's one you've researched and you enjoy, think you can put passion in, take the shift that you may not want as your first shift, show them the great job you can do, and then open you know, yourself up to let them know, 
hey, I'd like to actually move into X, Y, or Z shift, you know, whatever it is at this point, and use that as a point of entry instead of shopping around and trying to get this ideal, sh you know, ideal shift at an ideal wage, um, because that's what you think that you deserve that it's kind of owed to you. Okay. Um, well, those are actually all the questions that I have on here. So are there any other helpful tips that you might have for people who just have no idea what the workforce is really like <laughs> or anything? I think, well, I think building, on, yeah. building on what Brian said, <laughs> you have to get started. You know, and don't, don't think about the perfect job. Um, you could argue that there isn't even one, <laughs> one such thing. But get started, get the experience. And then when you do start the job, you know, bring your whole self to the job. And I mean, we've, we've all gone out, you know, shopping or to restaurants and, and the people that are in there serving us, you know, are half asleep on the job. Mm -hmm. You know, they're there physically, but their mind is parked outside somewhere. So I think you also have to just make the best of it. And a lot of that is mental and say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the best I can, or maybe don't even bother doing it. So I think get, get engaged in it, get some experience, get going, but then bring yourself to the role and really try to enjoy it, engage with customers, you know, treat them like you would want to be treated, you know, and, uh, and, and really um, be there when you're there at work and not just you know, counting the hours till you get off and, and, or till you get your paycheck. And I think if you do that, good things will happen. People will recognize it because that'll separate you from other folks real clearly. And then you know, you can, you can, uh, it'll lead to better and better opportunities. Yeah, I would say, you know, um, we've done some work with Disney and they have a saying that's purpose versus task. And so for everybody in their organization and they, like others, have people that clean the streets and, you know, serve cotton candy and operate the rides. And then there's more glamorous things of being princesses and cast, you know, characters. But they try to have everybody remember that the purpose in that organization is to create this fabulous most of the time once in a lifetime experience for people so whatever your job is if it's you know sweeping the street or if it is being cinderella that you're there to satisfy that that customer's experience and if you keep that in mind and when you are the street cleaner versus the cinderella like leo said give it 110 percent that's what's going to differentiate you um, and if you go into it with your eyes wide open, knowing that you're going to be the best trash collector or dishwasher, it, it sets your mind in a better place to do that job, even though it might not be the best job in the world to have. What kind of advice would you give to someone who has their heart set on just one career that they really, really want to have, but they really probably don't have the best chance <laughs> for that career? Mm, that one's tough. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, to me, though, don't give up on your dreams either. Yeah. E either. I mean, you know, sometimes that's difficult. Uh, again, you might have to go away from it to gain some other experiences, but you're always going to be learning and growing. But I think, you know, also I see a lot of people that give up too soon. You know, if something's really worthwhile, it might take some time and effort. And, um, and I think stay with it a little bit if it's really your passion and something you love. But don't be afraid to start off and get experience somewhere else and circle back. You know, I think also talk to people that are in those roles. What, what was their background? How did they go about doing it? What's their experiences that they needed to build to get into that field? So leverage some people that are already doing it. And you might even be surprised that some of their stories weren't so easy either. So I think don't give up on your dreams, you know, and, uh, and just stay with it, but do it in a, in a really um, uh, educated way. So really talk to them, seek them out. I think if you seek out people, they usually will talk with you and help you out and say, say, hey, here's, here's how it worked for me and here's what it took and you could learn from that. Yeah. I think also, you know, don't be afraid to take internships. Don't be afraid to take things that right off the bat might not seem you've made it to the ideal job, but are definitely stair steps up to that, you know, um, up to that type of career that you want. Or if for whatever reason, if you've researched it and the exact one you, you want isn't available, you know, look at what it is you enjoy about that. Is it being outdoors? Is it working with people? Is it working with, you know, computers? And see if there's things kind of in the second, third circles of that career that are like that, but maybe not ideally what it is, and see if you can get into that arena instead. You guys have both talked about, about um, having a lot of experience in what workforce you're going to go into, but what are some good ways to um, get involved with experience yourself early on? Well, I think, you know, uh, in my, in my, my opinion is you have a lot more experience than you think. You know, you've been in schools, you've worked on teams, uh, you've been collaborating at school, you might have been on sports teams or on a band, you know, and doing a lot of things that are very transferable to the business world 
But you have to think about that and how do you communicate that when you get a chance to. So don't think, you know, just because, oh gosh, I've never really had a, a, a job. You've had the right kinds of experiences in a lot of cases. If you think through that and then be able to communicate that to say, wait a minute, I haven't had a direct experience, but these kinds of experiences have given me the preparation that I can bring to your organization. Yeah. So don't undersell yourself. You probably have more than you even know. I think, and the only way to get real true, true work experience is to get that job. And so the other bit of advice I'd give you is let everybody that you know, your parents, your friends' parents, your teachers, you know, people that can help you find jobs, let them know you're looking for that. Because even though jobs are posted, there's thousands and thousands of jobs, even in Joplin, that are posted at any given point. And you can't keep an eye on every one of those avenues. And some of them aren't logical. So try to spread your network out and let people know what you're looking for and have them help you identify the potential spots and then even give you a good word of recommendation to be an applicant you know, for those type areas. Because a lot of jobs, um, to some extent, are kind of who you know. And it might not that you, you'll still get interviewed equally with everybody else, but the very fact that you found out about it is a big leg up. All right, well, I think that's all we have for today. Mm -hmm. So thank you for being here with us and for being around the campus and stuff. Excellent. And thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs>